Welcome back, folks, to the Membership Machine Show. This is episode 15. We're going to be discussing in this episode um, the best donation plugins on WordPress. I've got my co host, but we've also got a special guest. We've got Chris from Lifter LMS, um, one of the um, learning management systems that we highly recommend on the show. Um, Chris is going to give us a quick outline of where Lifter is what hopefully what they're planning to move the platform on in 2023 and just a general quick discussion about where learning management systems and e-learning is going in this year so i'm gonna let my co-host introduce himself and then chris so spence would you like to introduce yourself to the audience uh, absolutely. It's Spencer Foreman from SpencerForeman.com. No E in Foreman. Uh, that's my hub. And you can also find me at WPLongify.com. That's great. And Chris, would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners and viewers? Yes, I'm Chris from Lifter LMS, a leading learning management system for WordPress. And I have a <clears throat> podcast for course creators and WordPress pros called LMS Cast. That's great. Before we go into this great episode, I've got a couple messages from our major sponsors. We'll be back in a few moments, folks. We're coming back. I just want to point out, if you're looking to host your learning management system or membership website on WordPress, and you should, um, have a look at WP Tonic. We provide really specialized hosting, plus a suite of the leading plugins. One of them um, is Lifter LMS, which we highly support. And we offer also a load of other services in one package at one great price. So you really want to go over and have a look at that. So go over to WP Tonic. So, Chris, so what are you, you know, it sounds like you've done some recent announcements. There's been some um, large changes in learning in Lyft at LMS. Uh, maybe you want to outline what some of those changes are and what are some of the some of your plans for 2023? How do you see um, the plug in the platform moving forward, Chris? Only small questions. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot wrapped in that. Um, yeah, so I guess the, the big announcement is that Jason and Kim Coleman from Paid Memberships Pro have become partners in the business at Lifter LMS and not just as investors, but also uh, actively working inside the company as well. So if you don't know them, uh, Jason and Kim are wonderful people. They've been around WordPress a very long time. They're huge WordPress open source advocates. Jason is a particularly strong developer and Kim is a particularly strong design and front end, front end engineering user experience person. So I'm really excited to have this new leadership and skills on board. They're still, of course, working in Paid Memberships Pro, which is, um, you know, their 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 business that they've had for a long time. It's it's been around even longer than Lifter LMS. So I'm excited to, um, you know, see what we can create together over at Lifter LMS. And I can get into some specifics there. Um, but I don't know, maybe we could start at like the, the just the macro, like what's going on in the online course, the space, the LMS space, the creator economy and WordPress in general. Because I think when we look at the macro view of what's going on in the world with w eyes wide open, then it helps us as product creators and entrepreneurs figure out how to build into the future. A um, couple big things happening. We've got the economy, we've got inflation. Uh, this is really WordPress's big opportunity in terms of, um, you know, the some of the, the tech in WordPress is free and a lot of it is low cost compared to SaaS solutions. So this is a good good moment for WordPress and particularly in the e-learning side to shine. Like Lifter, as an example, has a free core LMS plugin. It's completely free, super powerful. Um, so So the opportunity for WordPress now is to kind of exploit that the three overlapping trends of uh, the affordability of it, also with the um, kind of booming creator economy, which has been going on for a while, but it's it's further compounded by financial pressures on people to create additional income streams, or perhaps um, 
you know, gain skills or teach skills in an an economy where college sometimes is too expensive or can't keep up with the rate of change in society. And then the third big trend that's happening is artificial intelligence, which the way that impacts course creation has to do with uh, mostly the pressure that's going to be on the consumer of online learning and content, where if people are going to be churning out more and more and more content, that means the content that people do consume needs to be as minimal as possible. Um, you know, really functional. It can be aug- augmented by AI in terms of, uh, you know, rounding out the creator's vision and hardening up whatever it is they're trying to teach. But in a world of infinite AI and infinite content, I think minimalism and small courses that actually work, that don't take huge asks of attention and time of the learner are going to become more and more important. So I'm kind of going over a lot there. Do you want to jump in before we get into the specifics about the future of Lifter? Um, yeah. <coughs> I'm going to pass it over to Spence. Uh, yeah, you I, I mean, w- w- there have been a lot of active discussions across the board, obviously, but in the public spaces, and I see you there as well, of course, with Twitter, um, the AI part and the entrepreneur space and what your business means is going to be ch- in addition to the things that would have otherwise been your mainstream content. So the, the one common factor throughout all this is the human aspect, the relationship aspect. So as we move into a place where the shiny new toys are now capable of spitting out things that can save 80% of your mundane tasks, finally... <laughs> those of us who are in the business of having a relationship with human beings have to really, I think, turn all of our attention towards that versus the whiz bang, look, I've got the new toy that nobody else has. Because in a world where everything is a click away or an ask away, everyone is going to be exhausted. But the only thing that they can't deliver with AI is the common sense of having a human being who's not a virtual human being, by the way, not a a simulated uh, video audio human being, but a real human being. And I think that's the part that also applies not just to the marketing, but applies to the job market and to the solutions. In a world where you can ask your robots, I mean, I'm a science fiction fan, Star Wars or Star Trek or whatever. There's plenty of robots and androids and automations that people talk to, but there's still human drama. You just have to move society to a place of, okay, you and I both have access to everything. Now, how is it going to change the things that I can do for you? I think people are lazy and want the help of other people by nature. So if you have a course, make it easy for a lazy person to just get right to the point and so forth. Versus like, I'm going to make you drag through 27 lessons of of stuff like I would in the past. By the way, uh, Chris and I were talking before the show and we both have school age children, I have some adult children, and I have some grandparent age children, and I have some children that haven't found me. But of the children that know me, the ones that are of school age, I find it interesting. They don't teach cursive. They don't use written stuff anymore. It's all automated, all automated. And the kids now don't do rote memorization. Why? (laughs) Because even though the school system is slightly broken, and I know Chris has some homeschooling in his life, that's the future. The future is we all can just ask an AI robot what's this or that. It's not a skill that's useful anymore, like calligraphy and so forth. But it's still for those of us who are from Gen X and in between, a little shock to the system of like letting go of the old stuff. That's great. I've got two um, <clears throat> specific questions for you, Chris. Um, the way I, I can see AI helping, um, because I think in learning management and membership um, platforms, gamification came and um, has had some effects, but that that was a trend that's almost two, three years old now. There doesn't seem to be any fundamental change, but I think one is coming. And where I see it, Chris, is using AI mm-hmm. to customise the learning experience m- much more being able to judge um, how people are answering questions, um, interaction with content on the training platform, which should be the Lifter LMS, 
and utilizing AI and automation to give a more customized learning experience. What do you think about that? Do you think I'm on the right track or is that too far out? Because I don't think we can discuss anything more than a year, 18 months out, really, with any type of um, clarity, really. Yeah, there's a term for that. It's called adaptive learning. And the cool thing is sort of like how Google and advertising kind of knows it predicts what you're likely to buy, not just retargeting. There's other ways it figures out like what ads to show you. The AI uh, engines behind all that are getting smarter and better, you know, more accurate and stuff like that. So when it comes to content, either on the website or inside of a course, you're absolutely correct. But like we want like the user of the internet, the consumer wants a low friction, customized, made just for them, personalized experience, which is kind of what, uh, you know, if you look at a social media company like TikTok, they're known for their algorithm and their AI. It really kind of detects things more than just what the user action is. Like in a course, it's like grades on a quiz or completing a lesson or, um, you know, passing or failing or enrolling in something or drip content or something like that. But the next stage of AI is about those more subtle cues that it can detect based on your like scroll behavior, um, you know, your, your interactivity with the content. So yeah, there's a big opportunity for adaptive learning and, and WordPress LMS and, and really learning as a whole everywhere. The other thing I wanted to ask you about is that I've, I've been, um, it's more in kind of business terms, but it also does offer a lot of uh, benefits to the purchaser of Lifter. Um, but it's just, I just wanted to see what you were having similar thoughts. Um, I'm very impressed in some ways what Buddy Boss has done um, with offering that app. Um, because the way I, I see it, it's great benefits of um, it gives the company um, a subscription model, but it doesn't attempt to turn um, an open source element into a subscription. Because in some ways, I think if you attempt to do that, you end up with the worst of both worlds. You end up with all the hoops that you, you do have to jump through to some extent by utilizing WordPress, but I feel it's very worthwhile um, to jump through those slight hoops. But you end up with a quasar SaaS scenario, but it's not a SaaS scenario. So it's, to some ways, I think it's the, uh, the worst scenario. But on the other hand, the company, um, a WordPress company, having ongoing subscription revenue is very attractive in business terms and gives the resources to continuously improve the platform. But I see um, having an app, um, you get the benefits of an app scenario, but you're not, you still have the openness of the key product. Is that making any sense, Chris? And have you been looking at that yourself? Yeah, I've, I've had my eye on apps for just the industry and how it integrates with WordPress for a long time. And I do like what Buddy Boss has done and AppPressor. And the, the big opportunity for WordPress, if they're going to go from 43% up, is to figure out that app gap. If there was a way to um, make it easy for WordPress web application websites to easily port into the Android and Apple stores, that's that's where distribution really unlocks to that next level of gain. There's just a lot of friction there, especially yeah. for DIY creators and, and even just regular freelancers and agencies who, you know, are really focused on WordPress and websites and don't have the background in apps. So there's a, if we can unlock that friction point between the two distribution systems, i.e. your own website and uh, app platforms, that would be amazing. So that's, are the whole, you... that's the holy grail of this. Sorry, Jonathan. But, uh, no, the, holy, the holy grail of WordPress is very metaphorically like the Luddites of the 19th century with, you know, automated machines to make fabrics and stuff. We're in a world of, of tinkerers at the flea market picking up pieces and building stuff. And everything they did was like the original fabric makers from, you know, hand sewing it. 
we can't get to the machines because the I'm not being political, but the leadership on WordPress is not aligned with that. And the people themselves are not going to start, you know, like, oh, sure, let's all cooperate together in a vacuum. They have to have some cohesive central, you know, flag to wave to. And that's the difficult thing, isn't it? Because we all know that's where it's going to go eventually. It's just a question of who's going to get us there and how. Yeah, yeah just a couple more points there is that the the app bridge um if we can cross that and from the user's perspective i don't think they really care when they're on the screen they just want the job done which means you know wordpress needs to have and, and people who build on top of it like myself need to have a really mobile first approach which we say we do and we're responsive but in reality how many people have actually used the wordpress admin dashboard on a mobile device and uh, you know, can you build a course with a WordPress LMS like Lifter LMS or anything else on a mobile device? I mean, technically, yes, but it's not necessarily built from first principles in that way. So if we can figure out the mobile first and then figure out how to get into the to the app stores, you know, I've I've put on my phone um, like little shortcuts that look like apps that take me to my website or other websites I want quick access to. And I don't care. It works. It's just a shortcut. The fact that it pops over to the browser is uh, is not. It doesn't bother me. I'm still getting to what I want to get to. And then the other big opportunity, especially with learning, uh, as we know from flying on airplanes and and um, going in places where we don't have Wi-Fi or cellular network, is that if we can crack the nut on how to do offline learning from a WordPress LMS website or via the app. That's huge because. Mm -hmm. A lot of learning, um, you know, the requirement to be connected to the internet and Wi-Fi is is a challenge. It's not always available for everybody all the time. Yeah, well, that's another thing. So we're going to wrap it up. So what are there any um, upcoming, obviously it's tricky for you, but I mean, in the next few months, are there any improvements um, or new features coming up on Lifter? Um, that you want to discuss with our mm -hmm. audience or or is it are things brewing but you want to keep them slightly under the cover until you announce them i'll share i like to build in public i'll share uh i'm not going to share everything but i'll share some highlights <laughs> uh what, one thing is we did a lot of great design work with web dev studios a, a premier wordpress agency in the space and uh we've got that's that's going to start rolling out both inside the app and on our website, which is going to increase, you know, usability and modernness and just overall beauty. I'm super excited for that. Um, Lifter LMS is an all-in-one solution. So unlike all the other platforms out there in WordPress, um, you don't have to buy as many third-party tools and whatnot. And one of those things we offer is our own theme. Now, keep in mind, I'm a big fan of Astra, Cadence, and all the rest. Uh, but but for some people, they just want to do business with one company and they just want one place to go for support. So our new theme is uh, in the works and coming soon, which will be fully full site editing, modern, um, ready to go, super extendable uh, and, and really beautiful and, and designed specifically and exclusively for Lifter, Lifter LMS. I think people are really going to like that. Um, we've also got some more premium add-ons coming to fulfill some of the various use cases of how Lifter LMS is used, both inside businesses and in coaching programs and schools. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. And I'll, I'll let you know what one of those is going to be, which is a, um, it's a private site add-on, which helps a business basically create an internal training site that is 100% hidden from the public view, uh, which is pretty awesome. Uh, there's other use cases where that could be used besides within a business. And of course, a learning management system has individual user accounts and, you know, it already has like kind of privacy built in, but this is like the extreme version that is used with inside companies, corporations, governments, things like that. Um, so I'm super excited for, like an in, for that. Rollout. Yeah, basically, but easily accessible on the open web. Oh, that was fantastic. We're going to wrap it up now. Um, like I say, if you're interested in a learning management system to help you build your course business, definitely have a look at Lifter LMS. 
So I'm going to let you go, Chris. Um, thanks for coming on the show. I think it's exciting times for your business, for the new partners. They're great people. I'm really excited. And thank you for your support, Chris. It's much appreciated. All right. Good to see you all. Take care. See, see you Chris. later. Bye. Right, folks, we're going to go forward now with our, um, we're going to be looking at um, donation plugins. So um, before we go into actually looking at some of the Pacific offerings, um, Spencer, I thought um, before we go, before we go for our break, um, we should just have a general discussion about what you think are some of the key things people um, should have in their mind about when they make a choice about what could be the right donation plugin solution. So what are some of the broader things you think people should have in their mind before they look at Pacifics? Sure. Um, well, what we found is that the concept of a donation also incorporates the pay me now. So you don't have to, I mean, if you think donation, a lot of people go to a 501c3 company in their mind that it's for charity, but that's not necessarily true either. Many of these solutions and even my own launch flows uh, plugin with WooCommerce allow you to instantly pay somebody any amount of money, which in today's world is actually the preferred method of doing it. So for example, your client that you're building a site for or for yourself, massage therapist or your, your the delivery driver, you need to randomly... Um, make it easy for somebody to pay with a credit card or PayPal or a debit card from the same system that the rest of your business operates on. And that's the differentiator. Instead of it going to randomly to Venmo or, you know, Zelle or PayPal pay me now, it, you want it to go into the same system where the rest of your business transactions happen because that way your business can account for it and the customer can be in your marketing automation. So there's two functionalities that I focus on in these things. The difference between them has to do with the extra paperwork that some 501c3s require. So again, a lot of uh, people with various needs in different countries have a lot of extra reporting and paperwork in order to keep their, their tax exempt or tax free standing. And so for them, some of these, your hard drive is uh, making the noise again. Yeah, sorry. The, for some of these companies, that's the most important feature. So like there's a, the OG in this group, uh, give, that's one of the big features. That's, you know, the reason to use it. We'll talk about that when we get there. So pay, what, you know, pay me now versus donation. How much is it important whether you get all the reporting or is it just the ease of use? I think the other thing as I was looking at the list that we're going to be discussing <clears throat> is it's very similar to our previous show last week which was about um, funnel builders. Um, there seemed to be a definitely a uh, divide between those that offer a kind of inbuilt solution uh, and those that out of the gate integrate with WooCommerce. I yeah. know I, I, I am guessing which route that you, you would. Um, obviously, there's also the last one we're going to discuss is the big gorilla in the market. Um, yeah. But, I mean, well, uh, let's just elaborate on that last point, because I think that's really also important. I feel sometimes like a broken record, but I think that's also beneficial on show 15 here for people to now start to get a sense that ah, it's kind of like the same criterion keep coming up. Framework plugin versus a feature plugin. Okay. Working with WordPress, or by the way, it just sort of connects to WordPress. Mm -hmm. Is it integrated to WooCommerce or is it not? Those criterion are the filters by which a decision tree in my business and my consulting in my mind always comes up. The ideal situation, in my opinion, for any plugin that is a WordPress plugin, first and foremost, is that it works natively with WooCommerce, that it's feature focused, not a framework focus, and that it's not distracted by all the other things that it does. It just sits nicely as a Lego block in a stack of Legos. Everything else that it doesn't do in those three regards puts it farther down the chain of whether I would ever recommend or use it. And because we're building with Legos here in WordPress. Yep, yeah, I, I totally see that. All right, well, before, let's, let's go into one or two before we go for our break then. Um, so let's start off with W crowdfunding. Had a bit of a look at it, like, like the look of it. I haven't used it 
myself, it comes from a theme shop that actually produces a learning management system, and it's called Tutor LMS, um, which um, we recommend either Lifter LMS or Learn Dash, um, and we offer that. But Tutor is a great offering um, from uh, experience and well would disturb established coding shop based in um, the subcontinent. I've interviewed some of the key personnel. They're big in Joomla and also they're big in WordPress. Um, what what do you think of this offering, um, Spencer? <clears throat> it's cl uh, it's clean, it's solid, it meets all of the other criterion that we talked about. So for example, you want to know who's producing it. You want to know who's on the team. You want to know their history. You want to know if they'll be around. How's the support? How's the documentation? This plugin is priced appropriately. So you have a hundred, I, I believe there's a free version as well, but you've got the pro version starts at 149 uh, for one site. It uses a traditional, you know, stacked bracketing model, one site, five site, unlimited sites. So from 149 up to 299, they actually do, ironically, which is uh, appropriate, offer a lifetime version. Um, I'm not 100% sure whether for an agency, $1,000 one time is going to be something that would pay for itself. But certainly, if you had more than 10 clients, then perhaps it would, because then you could just keep upselling the license. But I like the fact that it's there. As far as the actual what it does and the interface, the features all accomplish what we're talking about. And as I mentioned, it works with WooCommerce. So from that standpoint, I'm definitely thumbs up on somebody investigating this. The, the company itself is known for a very beautiful interface. And yeah. you can see from the screenshots that it won't make you look like you went into a time machine to 2007, which, ta-da. So I have, I have all, I, we got to come up with like a Siskel and Ebert, you know, like thumbs up, thumbs up. This is yeah. a thumbs up. Yeah, I would give you. It's a reputable company. They they got they've been involved in the Joomla WordPress for quite a while. It's it's a pretty large company. I think it's got over a hundred to two hundred employees. Um, they um, they've got a steady business. Um, the UX design is one of the best. I think they they do know their UX design, and it shows in almost all their. They've got about four to five. Uh, major plugins, Tutor LMS is their major um, plugin in the WordPress space, um, which they are pushing quite hard. But um, they know what they're doing, aren't they? And they, they're public, you, you know who's behind it. Um, it's got all the criteria that, that lead us to recommend a plugin, doesn't it, Spencer? Yeah, I mean, I would say that's the fair way to put it. You know, they scratch the itch of their clients. They cover the gambit from the themes to the blocks to the the Tutor LMS is a solid product. And we talked about it before in the LMS space. Um, so there's absolutely nothing here that would cause me to not recommend checking them out. But again, I always still fall back to, I hate to do this, but we just mentioned this with Chris. We're in the flea market environment of WordPress. So there's, there's a booth in the flea market called Themium. Uh, and they've got some really interesting products to check out. Yeah. So on to, before we go for a break, the opposite in some ways. But um, I know we agreed, Spencer, that we were going to cut down the SaaS kind of solutions um, and, uh, and concentrate more on WordPress, which we are. The reason why I, I put this one in is that on all the, all the lists, all the other YouTube videos, if you do a search, this is one of the main <clears throat> solutions that come up. It has got a WordPress plugin, um, but it's more of a SaaS as well, and that's DonorBox. Um, what's your experience of this solution, and how would you place it with all the other ones that we're going to be discussing? Sure. Well, I think what really needs to be discussed here is the difference in the business model, right? So, for example, if you look at their plans, they have their hand in your donor box. <laughs> so, the the thing is, you've got at the free plan, the standard plan, a 1.75% platform fee. In the pro plan, a 1.5%. And then there's like the premium is like 1.5%. So their business model 
is taking a piece of your action. And again, I'm not going to suggest to anybody that that's not acceptable because even the gateways themselves, you know, Stripe, PayPal, and so forth, that's the cost of doing business. But <laughs> imagine you're really successful with fundraising and you have choice A, which is, let's say, WordPress based, WooCommerce maybe, whatever. Uh, you just take the money and you pay Stripe or you pay PayPal. That's the cost of doing business. But then uh, some of the guys come around and, uh, hey, it'd be a shame if something happened to your donation site. I'm going to need that 1.75%. I don't think that really sounds as good if you raised a million dollars or $187 million. Oh. <laughs> Either way, this is the conversation of many of the very popular recent newsletter sites and uh, alternative blog sites that got a lot of traction during COVID because of simplicity, but then there's no sliding scale where it tapers off to not taking any more. So if it's fair to take 1.75% of the first, I don't know, thousand, two thousand dollars $2,000, but after a certain point to keep taking nearly 2% of your money at infinitum, do the math people. I mean, you know, if you sold $200,000 worth of stuff, it's a, it's a lot of cash. Yeah. I, th I think you made some great points. That's why I added, uh, I was in two minds, but I thought my logic, I think you've panned out my kind of logic to some degree about why I have I, it. I want to add one more thing to this. This is a plug for Drew Angel over at <clears throat> PayPal uh, for WooCommerce. Uh, Drew is a, a client of mine and now a colleague and a friend, but the difference in his model is he allows you to do the kind of, we're not mentioning it here, but like his plugin with WordPress and let's say WooCommerce allows you to essentially just take money instantly. And guess what? There's no extra charge. Why? Because PayPal was smart enough to give developers in his position a piece of their 2.9%. Now that makes sense. Like you cap out at the 2.93% with 30 cents fine, cost of doing business. That vendor gateway gives that money away to people who to write stuff, no problems. But once you start going to three, four, or five percent, I mean, forget about it. And that's what a lot of these SaaS solutions they offer a, a, a nice interface reporting functionality. But if you're looking for that, there's some great solutions that integrate one of them, uh, integrate right. with WooCommerce and have all the factors that Spencer pointed out. We're going to go for our break, folks. We will be back. We will be going through some great solutions if you're looking to build a donation-focused solution on WordPress. We'll be back in a few moments, folks. This podcast episode is brought to you by Lifter LMS, the leading learning management system solution for WordPress. If you or your client are creating any kind of online course, training-based membership website, or any type of e-learning project, Lifter LMS is the most secure, stable, well-supported solution on the market. Go to lifterlms.com and save 20% at checkout with coupon code PODCAST20. That's PODCAST20. Enjoy the rest of your show. We're coming back. We've had a, a, a bit of a chat with Chris from Lifter LMS. We've gone through some of the um, solutions if you're looking to build a donation um, solution on WordPress. Um, before we go into some of the other solutions, I just want to point out that we've got a great free resource where you can discuss every, all your membership needs, and that is the Membership Machine Show Facebook group, which me and Spencer of Admin are. If you've got any questions, please join us on that group, and we've got a great community there. It is growing and it's a great mixture of membership entrepreneurs and also WordPress implementers and developers. Please go over there. And if you've got any questions, both me and Spencer will do our best to be helpful. Um, so let's go on. Um, let's go on. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. I love it. Uh, seamless donations. What I'm not going to... I'm not going to influence you. Uh, what what was your um, 
what's your thoughts about seamless donations? Well, I might surprise you with this one. So this is an unusual one. I actually, <clears throat> being at my Gen X age that I am, 20, 26 times two, um, the, uh, actually now it's only 28 times two, I'm 56. I get a kick when I see a company that was founded before 2000, <clears throat> and sorry about my voice today, and it's just adorably running like like a little like a cookie factory in the mountains of Colorado. It's just minding its business, doing its thing. So this there's this David. It's got to be David Zatz founded Jeez. the company in 1998. He's got all kinds of other. Uh, maybe it's David uh, Gerwitz. But the point is, he just like. He's doing his thing, just like me, just like people of my generation. He's just doing his thing. He's got books. He's got, and this was a scratcher itch product, I'm sure. It doesn't try to be more than it is. It's not like waving a flag and tooting its horn and trying to say it's all this and that. It's just, it's a solid product. It definitely has got that sort of old school kind of retro look about the interface and so forth. But pricing wise, you can't beat it. I mean, it's priced appropriately. It's single site, 1995. <laughs> like, you can just, you can do that without even thinking twice about it. And that's it. And it works in WordPress. Ta-da. So I have a positive feeling about this one because it's not being sold on, no offense to Envato ThemeForce, but it's not being sold anonymously like in a, you know, that flea market being sold legit you can learn about the person the company they've been around forever they have huge customer base and i i think this is charming and awesome so it's something like if you need a simple thing check it out yeah i didn't know where you were gonna go with this and uh, but I, uh there were my own feelings it was like going back to the early days of wordpress not and that is not saying it doesn't do the job and it and it's not effective it's more about its presentation the actual when you go to the website uh, and the founder who uh, he's a uh, he does um, video reports for uh, next that um he's a journalist I journalist think. he's a journalist yeah. he's a technologist Gewurz. yes he does cnet videos he um he's a reporter for znet um it's kind of it's like going back to the, the 20 uh 2000s listen even when i mean this is what's so awesome you go just check them out this reminds me a lot of like uh they they update it but there's oh man like so many sites that i can think of that i just want to say but like even the um, base camp guys you know like jason freed and so forth like this reminds me of like when base camp came out i mean everything was all in serif fonts and you know it looks like it was written in 1998 and it was it's still been there since forever. It's like the Craigslist of, but the guys, you can't, you can't argue about any of this. He's all out there. He hits it on every single point that I would look for. And it's actually very reassuring to some extent of seeing something that's just doesn't change. It's just stays the same because it's working. So sure. There we go. Um, on to the next one, um, which is donation for WooCommerce. Um, it um yeah what 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 do you reckon about this one i i, I did a dive it's from a, a team from wpexperts.io mm -hmm. um they're based in eastern europe by the looks of it um they've got a few woocommerce add-ons they've got a bit of a library not an enormous one though I don't know much about them. I don't know what your experience is and uh, of them. Um, the WP experts. I let me see if I can get a quick rundown on their site I because the plugin itself I, I have seen and know. And this again, this fits into. Let's go back to my criterion earlier. Again, self shameless plug. If you're using WooCommerce. You've got everything you need to make a donation happen just from a product. It's just an esoteric difference, right? The difference between this plugin and, for example, like the big daddy we'll talk about at the end, it has to do with like reporting and all kinds of paperwork stuff. But if you just want the transaction, WooCommerce itself with nothing else will actually work. These plugins like this and launch flows, 
give you the simplicity and the speed of making it part of your other checkout or your other experience. So I see here that they're, they've been around since uh, 2011, 100,000 customers. I don't see a name on here, but that doesn't mean that they don't have it. It's just this is their, uh, their development company. Yeah. And the fact that it's in here inside of the WooCommerce store, there is a validation or a verification process I'm familiar with. Some people choose to be in there. Some people do not. I chose not to be in there because uh, for a while they were taking a higher percentage of the money. And also when you put it in there, the same suggestions I was saying happen. Like now it's is part of a bigger area, which gives you more customers, but it gives you a different type of a customer. Some of us prefer to have more concierge direct relationship with our customers. I would say this is a solid choice. It's $99 and it lets you do exactly what you want. The pricing and the licensing of anything you get inside of the WooCommerce shop is always going to be at a premium. It's like shopping at Whole Foods. So is this a great deal? Not a great deal, but is it solid? Yeah, it's a solid choice. I would just say for most people, they're going to need to consider whether or not the 500-pound the gorilla at the end that we talk about is more of a match because for a couple bucks more, you get a lot of different capabilities. On to the next one then, charitable. A good name, <laughs> charitable, wpcharitable.com, um, 99 per year, one site license. Um, what's your thoughts about these people? I This one caught me off guard, honestly. I don't, I've never seen this one. Let's see if, I, on a quick, Spencer being curious, George, whether I can find out. There's plenty of documentation. I would like to see who it is behind this. And I'm not seeing that like immediately. It's charitable LLC. I don't, I don't see anything about who's behind this. Do you know who's behind this? Is there something? I got to be truthful. I did do a dive um, on these. This this is one that I don't know much about. So I was hoping that you knew something about them. Um, uh, oh, here, guess. <laughs> well, ring that bell, but. Uh, in the middle of their read the latest from a blog, guess who has purchased them? Uh, not our friend, is it? Yes. Apparently, as of June 22nd, I'm excited to share that Charitable is joining the Awesomotive team. <laughs> we, Wes and I launched Charitable in 2015. Yada, yada, yada. Seven years. Um, I'm not sure who writes this blog. There's a pattern here, but oh, here it is. Eric Doms, founder. Okay. He's got a LinkedIn link there, so I can go see uh, his history. And I, I'm sure there's, yeah, he's a full stack developer. Again, from Australia, no complaints here at all. This is just a, a great example of the WordPress economy that we were literally talking about at the beginning of the show with Chris. The world we started in was a bunch of people, like all of us, Eric included, just making solutions to scratch our own itches or our clients' itches. And then monetization sets in. And then you reach a point where you go, like, is this plugin, is this thing I'm doing worth the time spent if I'm just out in the wilderness by myself? Or do I need to consolidate into a vertical where all of a sudden the, the traffic of, uh, you know, awesome motive is going to be poured at my thing? And it makes perfect sense. So I, I do not begrudge uh, Eric or the team one bit, but at the same time, this kind of goes back to the conversation we've had. Again, I'm not going to beat that drum. If I had a choice of buying this plugin or something else, just look at the history of who owns it now and decide for yourself if that's a relationship you're looking for. That's that. I think we just go on. I, think. <laughs> I don't hold that against the developer at all because nah. if I was in his situation, I would absolutely take that ticket to the Willy Wonka factory. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Is that what we're going to call it? The, the big purchase? I mean, we, should, we should... Is we that, that going to be our... Is that we should call be... it the Willy Wonka Chaka factory because yeah. otherwise we sound like we're disingenuous. But see, keep in mind, I hope in the near future there'll be other things that I can bring to the table to talk about this. This is a monopoly game that's playing out. And I like to think that I have something involved in the stakes one way or the other because it's an exciting game. But my difficulty, and I try to like balance that out, is that when we're doing a show here, people care about, I hope, what the plugins do and how they do. And I don't want to begrudge any of the developers that end up going to the chocolate factory. But when the game is played out, you're going to end up essentially 
associated with the chocolate factory versus some other way of doing things. And I think that people should understand that because we've seen that in the real world play out. When you buy Oracle or you buy Microsoft or you buy this or that, when you buy all the products from a certain company, you get the experience that they're delivering. And since this particular chocolate factory has a history demonstrably of doing things with their marketing and otherwise, be advised. And one of the things that I saw this week, and I'm probably going to do a video if I feel like it, I did a search for certain terms and certain phrases, you know, because, and I am not exaggerating what I'm saying. The, the top 40 websites that come back when you search for a term have all exactly the same content, the exact same list, the exact same link, all of them identical, but with different websites, all pointing to the same thing. And I'm sorry, folks, but like maybe the AI will change that. But that is just Black Hat 101 is 20 different websites all publishing the same thing, all pointing oh, yeah. to the same source. I would say it's black because I would say it's, it's pushing, pushing the pushing it as far as possible. But uh, I mean, because they, 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 Google, honestly, it's a it Google. Is. It's a Google. Google, Google lets they, that happen. Yeah, you know they're supposed to have all. They're supposed to know all this and be able, es especially when the products in the list have absolutely nothing to do with what the topic of uh, the title is about. <laughs> Not at all. It's hilarious, but they they have joined the Willy Wonder um, chocolate factory. <laughs> that's what we're going to call it from now on. <laughs> Uh, Rob, that's a good. Uh, that's what we're going to call it. Uh, Rob, on to the next one, which isn't. Isn't well, it's part of the Winnie Wonder Chocolate Factory as well, isn't it? Uh, this one, WP Simple Pie. I think they sold up to the Winnie Wonder Chocolate Factory as well, didn't they? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it seems you have to go back and check the list, but it's happening fast. <laughs> yeah, I think they yep, are. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yep, 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 yep. Yeah, yep, they're part yep. of the Winnie Wonder Chocolate Factory. Um, but it's you. It, can you give a quick outline of what WP Simple Pie is? <laughs> this is this is um, this is interesting, and I'll tell you why. Because I'm not 100 percent sure that this fits into the like exact category. But let's go back to the criterion objectively. Remember, I said there's two things: you want donations, or you want to pay me now. I call it pay me now. Simple pay, right? This does that. This essentially allows you to just pay people for something, and it can be connected in various ways uh, through the ecosystem. This plugin itself obviously was an acquisition. I, I'd have to go back and dig up the feature, uh, the, the blog, to say who the original team was. Let's see if it still shows it. But the point is, it does it really well. It yeah. On-site payment forms, recurrent payments, custom fields, tax calculations. This is an alternative to using WooCommerce, and it's an alternative to just doing something that's like a self uh, framework, right? Like uh, the big daddy we're going to talk about in a second. Let me just see something though. I want to see if the team is still listed in here. Yeah. Spencer Fennell back in 2014. Again, I mean, listen, there's no, uh, I keep saying it because I feel bad. Nothing to do. Spencer and Adam Lay, great little plugin. It's always been around. They they took their golden ticket and they're I'm losing friends here because they're such great people, but they I don't buy, think I don't think, they, I don't think well, so. for, for, for very understand. I, I don't think so. Here's why. If you were an athlete, and I have actually a, a client of mine, a baseball jobs overseas. He, he has a site for baseball players who are done in the United States, they go off to play on a team overseas, right? Their their US career is over, but their career might go on and so if you're an athlete or a rock star or whatever, and you've still got the joy of life left in you, you want to play. You want to be a you know a rock star. You want to be a professional athlete. You go to the team that will have you because they need you. They want you. They can support you. I do not begrudge the developers at all. That's the nature of what's happening in WordPress. The thing I begrudge is the fact that we're on a monopoly board and Awesome Motive has the wherewithal because Syed did an amazing job with what he did to get here of acquiring these companies and putting them into a vertical. There's other ones we talked about, right? So James Farmer's got WPMU, then there's the hosting companies. But what's missing here is the overall who's going to win the monopoly game and who's going to benefit or lose from that. And I think everybody should at least be aware <clears throat> that there's a cost when one company acquires all the various plugins versus them being offered in a different way. 
and with an, a fundamental beneath them that is fair and honest and straightforward. And that's the part that I'm not pointing a finger. I'm saying, remember how upset everybody got with GoDaddy way back when or with this or that company way back then or Twitter today? That's what happens when you consolidate too many things into one. Yeah, I'm a bit concerned about focus here, but there we go. That's another issue. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I, we have used WP Simple Pay, and I, I use it on the it's a nice plugin. on one or two of my own websites, and it works fine. And it starts one site license forty nine dollars, and it does. But you don't get the swings and roundabouts as some of the other plugins that we discuss. I'll add one other thing, and this is not th this is where you get like remember we talked framework versus plug, uh, WooCommerce compatibility versus random. <clears throat> I personally don't see why anybody would use Simple Pay instead of WooCommerce and WooCommerce subscriptions. Because at the end of the day, if you connect to WooCommerce, you've now tapped into essentially 1,200 other things you can do. If you do Simple Pay, it sounds like it's really great. It goes to Stripe. But what are you getting for that? Because you can just use Stripe directly. For free, I could just go in Stripe and make a pay me now thing with Stripe and just put that on a website. Why do I need simple pay in today's ecosystem? It reminds me a little bit about when we're talking about, you know, Adam Presser has been very um, prolific. And he's now got, besides the card flows, he's got that other, you know, methodology of taking money. Um, at, sure, uh, sure, car. Yeah. So, sure, car is kind of like along the same lines. He specifically did that because there's other things that does, right? That you can't do easily in WooCommerce. And he didn't want to have the overhead of WooCommerce. That I can understand the rationale of. WP Simple Pay seems to me like in 2014, it was kind of necessary to have this. But now that WooCommerce and WooCommerce subscriptions does everything, I would say for a lot of people it might be just a better way to go because when you're setting up this or that, who cares? You yeah. get more out of it. Anyway. On, to, on to the next one. Um, I always struggled with our Italian friends, W I T H. How do you pronounce it? Donations for WooCommerce. Wiff, Wiff. I met them at San Diego and I think it's Yif, but yif, I, could be yif. Wrong. I always struggle, don't I, with Yif. Very nice people. I don't um, know if that's how it says. <laughs> Well, we did establish they're from Italy, though. Yeah, they're, they're not Spanish. They're Italian. They're not Spanish company. They're Italian company. I know why you, you, you think everybody's Spanish now after learning our form people. Got, was it 170? $187 million. <laughs> the, the team is solid. Yith consistently, I mean, we, we've covered them almost every show. They have a plug-in for everything. For everything, they have, have they? They have a... They have a really, really good team. The plugins are updated. They've had their little hiccups here and there where little issues have come up with security. They've always fixed them. I have all positive things about the Yith products. I will say that, you know, it's like it's that flavor you prefer <clears throat> kind of thing. The way that their interfaces work is consistent. And for some people, they're very easy to work with. For other people, they feel like it's a little sometimes getting used to, but that's okay too. Um so nothing but good vibes on this. And the price is right. You know, it starts at, they have a sale now, $79.99 a year, normally $94.99. It's in the right uh, space. You know who they are. There's a demo. The documentation is publicly available. There's 77 or so, mostly 46 positive, 22 mostly positive and so forth. Only one bad review. And that was from my mom. Um, but otherwise, <laughs> but otherwise there's nothing... There's nothing I can say other than this is a great plugin, but it's essentially like it modifies a WooCommerce product, which kind of, you know, that's my point. This does a really good job, like the other two or three I mentioned, including launch flows of like, look, you got WooCommerce, just add this in. And all of a sudden a product is a donation or that's it. It doesn't do a lot of the fancy, you know, paperwork and stuff, but you don't need it. Right. So, <clears throat> The last and the big daddy, the big daddy of the plugins. Um, our last one, I thought I'd leave it to last. It kind of dominates um, Give WP. So before we go into Pacifics, what would you initially say about Give WP and where it is in the market price at the present moment? Well, they, you know, Matt and his partner, um, 
came from a different place, right? They wanted to build something for, I would say, corporations, enterprise. They wanted to build something that was essentially the a SaaS type of a product in a Word, WordPress ecosystem, right? And I think that's what's so amazing because I, uh, Devin, I think, was more outspoken than Matt. But the point is they both Oh, were, I love Devin. He's, just, he's, like, a, he's, what, a, he's a great what, developer, great, great guy, they, basically. They, they had a mission. Right. And so the idea is it was like in 2015, I think um, they, they wanted to focus on this specific thing. Is it a framework? Kind of. But it does work with WooCommerce, although it's sort of is an add on to a WooCommerce product. But it's also a WordPress thing that if you think about it, doesn't really need to work with a lot of other stuff. It does integrate, for example, with via WP Fusion to a CRM. And there are some times when that's a little frustrating because it would be cool if there was more capabilities to, you know, get some of the data across. But they sold the product. Um, I think they're with Liquid Web, right? Now. Yes, they're with Liquid Web. Liquid yes. Web, right? So they're in a good spot. Well, or was it WP Stella, or is it? Well, it's Liquid Web. Liquid Web. Yeah. I checked it on the footer, but it is always confusing. <laughs> Stellar and Liquid Web. They got about six different names, haven't they? <laughs> All the divisions, um, but again, as a compliment, that's, that's them finished as a sponsor, isn't it? <laughs> but there I we mean, go. I'll just say, as a comparable, this is the product that for free you can start out with. Right? This is the product that has all of those features, right? Donation forms, database, but it's got fundraising reports, templates, um, things that you would need if you were in like a, a very um, publicly displayed peer-to-peer -peer fundraising kind of a situation. You wouldn't feel like you're going to get stuck because this is essentially its primary purpose. It's not an afterthought. It's not a bolt-on. Um, so from that standpoint, everything is, this is the first choice. And I think to a certain degree, this is the only choice if you're doing fundraising seriously. The basic starts at 149 a year. And it goes up to, you know, five site license for everything in pro up to 600 a year for an agency, which again, for this power, it's good. Almost every enterprise client that's ever come to us uses this because why dick around? You know I mean? That's it. That's a technical term, but like why take a chance on something else? If they don't need all that extra stuff, then we just put them into WooCommerce and launch flows or something because like taking money is easy. It's just all the reports that are hard. Yeah, I think that's a great because Devin and his partner. Um, when I went to WordCamp, you went to WordCamp US, <clears throat> USA last year. Um, I had a chat with Devin. I interviewed him, and he's just a great guy. And he was just pointed out to me when they were developing this plat, this solution, is he said it's a totally different world. It's a quasar that like they had one foot in the world of WordPress, but he said there's a whole other world of conferences about donation, about the donation industry, about the non-profit industry. They have conferences right. about marketing, about best practice. He said they used to go to all the conferences. They know all the major um, influencers in that kind of sub-industry that supports the non-profit giving industry, if you want to, I don't, I'm a bit queasy about utilizing that language, but I don't know any kind of other kind of language because it is a kind of quasar sector in its own right. And they know a lot about it and they spent a lot of, um, and they were quite successful in building this yeah. platform, weren't they? Would you agree with I what I've just outlined? Yeah, and I mean, I feel bad because I'm going to say something positive to compare it, let's say, to like Access Ally. See, the difference here is this is a framework plugin, but I think Nathalie and Devin and Matt are all cut from the same cloth. I think you can see that in Chris and the rest of the team, Kurt and everybody else over there, Will, is that like there's certain people that are really inexorably connected to the products, right? Pippin Williamson was one of them. I like to think that's my motto as well with the things that I do, Jack Arturo. There's certain people you can't separate from the product. So these are both very passionate, well thought out 
founders who built something specifically to be more than just a tchotchke and to be more than like just for the money. It worked out though that they owned, I think, that space because the the kind of things that the corporate clients or the 501c3s need, this comes up yesterday. I had two of these calls. There's a completely different mindset of people who are yeah. looking for the solution. Like they don't know about, we just mentioned this at the beginning of the show with Chris. They don't know what WordPress is. They don't care what WordPress is. They just, somebody said, we've got a WordPress site and we need donations. And that's the point of the future. When we talk about like where the solutions are going to come from, it's my opinion. And I think based on fact, others agree that WordPress as a tinkering system is not going to be the first and foremost thing anymore. It's going to be WordPress solutions for this thing or that thing. And under the hood are the parts. Think of it like this. If you went out and bought a, a BMW today and it had a Harman Kardon stereo and some AMG wheels, like they might put those little logos on the, the sales sheet, but you're not buying a Harman Kardon kit or an AMG wheel kit. You're buying the BMW car ready to drive. And I think that's the thing that they built here. They built something that it's like a, a donation platform first. Oh, by the way, it works inside of your WordPress. Ta-da. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. Well, I, I think... <laughs> oh, God. And, and I don't think it takes a piece of your action, too, which, again, it's a business model, but I'm quite sure they are not involved in the fees. I have to check that, but I don't believe that. No, I think, I, think, I think you're correct about that, and I think it is a big... Um, yeah. Because we touched upon it with um, donor box, and but there's a host of these SaaS based solutions. I only chose donor box as a, a, the example, um, and the main thing is they all they all have various um, degree of integrations and specific things. But the main thing is they most of them they're a lot more expensive, and they want a cut of any. <laughs> Any donation. It'd be, I mean, I'll be frank with you. It'd be very difficult. Uh, you saw like Gumroad recently did a thing where they're at 10%. Now, Gumroad was an old-fashioned, like nostalgic thing from the day when it was really hard to take money. And there's about a dozen <laughs> or two other ones like that. But Gumroad had the cojones to go up to 10%. 10%. And I'm thinking to myself, there's other platforms like those blogging ones that were alternatives to WordPress where now they're hitting the wall because people are like, wait a second, like 5%, 6% of my business ad infinitum. This is extortionist at, at a certain point. It has to cut off because you add up the total cost and it's like my business made, I don't know, $100,000 this year and 30, well, 10,000 of it went to the plugin or something like that. Even yeah, but I've, I think I think also um, things come and go, things disappear, things don't. But I, I think also people were getting a little bit, not only personally but business-wise, getting a little bit tired of another SaaS subscription that they've got to pay. <laughs> because when you start, when you're the end of the month, you start adding them all up, um, um, it does it does hurt a bottom line of a business of, you know, this is a very large business. Um, they all add up. Um, it's, too much, it's too much relative money. That's the point. Like you, you know, if you said how much will it cost us this year for our accounting team or our legal team or our, what, even our taxes this year, if, if the 10% of your revenue amounts to like more than you're paying for anything else, you start to go, what are we doing here? Exactly. That doesn't, register because the, uh, the the value of the software does not stay proportional to like the gross income of the company because I think, Word, I think wordpress is a great um it's a great solution it just needs some specific issues to be sorted out um, it, um but it's a great value flexible platform that's got a history and um I think it's great. So with that up note, which is very rare for somebody like me, English, um, I think we're going to end the show. Um, so, Spencer, how can people find out more about you and what you're up to, Spencer? Well, my hub is at spencerforman, F-O-R-M-A-N, dot com. That's the easiest place because they're the four pillars of my business with consulting and software and training as well as uh, personal engagement with um, uh, different endeavors you can find it all there 
And you can find me anywhere on social media at Spencer Foreman as well. That's great. And please join us live. Um, we're, we're getting lonely here. If you're looking, you've got any questions about your membership website or want any advice, um, you can join us live at around 8.30 Pacific Standard Time. Um, go to the WP Tonic YouTube channel or join us on our Facebook group um and it's pushed there and you can ask us questions live and we will attempt to answer them um what more could you ask for um, i find it i find it's interesting by the way that we have a variety of people who show up depending on the topic the yes. topic the topic the live versus not live i mean we get plenty of people on the reposts and the reviews but the live versus not has to do with the topic so Oh, if it's about page builders or uh, hosting, uh, we get endless uh, group of questions. But there we go. Um, we will be back next week with another great show, hopefully giving you insight about what are the best solutions when you build your membership learning management system on WordPress. We will be back next week, folks. Bye. <laughs>